The human brain is incredible in a lot of ways. The more that we've tried to understand and map its functions and abilities, the more we have discovered aspects of it that work in ways that are both unexpected and frankly hard to believe. It is responsible for not only the regulation of our organs and control of our bodily functions, but simultaneously for processing our memories, controlling our emotions and dictating how we speak or understand others. When pathways or connections are damaged through trauma, through injury or through degradation by age, disease or illness, then it has been proven in certain circumstances that the brain can reroute and reform these connections in order to restore the functionality that once existed, or an approximation of it at least. In addition to physical differences, there are neurological disorders that may lead to sections of our minds being more active than expected, or simply lead individuals to process and retain information in a way that is quite unique. This brings us to the idea of the savant, a categorization estimated to occur roughly once in every one million people. A savant is someone who shows exceptional skill or ability in one narrow, hyper-focused area to a degree that would be considered inhuman to most. Things like performing absurdly complicated mathematical calculations in their heads, or being able to work out the day of the week that someone was born on simply by being given the date. These are examples of abilities demonstrated only by a vanishingly small fraction of the population. In general, these impressive skills in their very restricted fields do come at some cost, whether it's caused by a brain injury or a form of neurodivergence for these savants, the way that their mind works seems to offer them these abilities, but sometimes at the expense of some other functions. Some functions that an average person, maybe you or me, may not even think about can prove extremely difficult or even impossible for the savant. So to better illustrate what we mean, let's take a look at a man who was dubbed the Mega Savant and served as an inspiration for the main character in the Oscar winning 1989 film Rain Man. Kim Peek, who was born on November 11th, 1951, was a truly remarkable man. If given a person's date and year of birth, he could instantly be able to inform them not only of the day of the week that they were born, but also what the major news stories around the world were on that day. When it came to reading, it has been calculated that he could read a page every second, and despite this seemingly impossible rate of consumption, he would retain very close to all of what he was taking in. The consensus seems to be he maintained a 98% comprehension rate even at these speeds. So you may ask, how is it physically possible to absorb words on a page at such an accelerated rate? And the answer is that Kim would read two pages at once. With the book open in front of him, he would read both pages simultaneously, one with each eye. And at this pace, he would go through a reasonably sized book in between 30 to 45 minutes. Interestingly, this didn't even make him the fastest ever reader in the world, instead that honour goes to a man named Howard Berg, who managed to get under the page per second mark by reading 80 pages in one minute. Kim, however, was investigated and studied extensively during his lifetime by those who sought to understand how his mind was able to perform these feats. He was born with abnormalities in his brain, damage to some portions and some nerves, and connections missing, as well as a rare genetic syndrome. The combination of these resulted in him having lifelong struggles with what most of us would consider everyday function, but the doctors who studied him believed that his brain forged new connections to accommodate the pieces that were missing, explaining both his incredible talents and struggles in other, more mundane areas. When Kim travelled the country and gave demonstrations of his skills and talents, he did so with his father, Francis Peak, who assisted him with functions he couldn't perform, such as buttoning his shirt or brushing his teeth. The elder Peak confirmed that Kim would be greatly delayed in his development throughout his youth if he looked at typical markers, such as not walking until the age of four, but was already reading books by 18 months and memorising their contents. Laterally, he made his appearance with one of the Oscars that Rain Man won. The screenwriter of the film, Barry Morrow, gave it to him as a gift of gratitude, and it travelled with Peak everywhere he went, much to the delight of the man himself and the people he entertained. 
Sadly, he passed away in 2009 at the age of 58 from a heart attack in his home. Next, we could consider the life of Daniel Tammet, a British-born savant who speaks 11 languages fluently and has Asperger's syndrome. He possesses an extraordinary memory, reciting Pi to in excess of 25,000 digits, a feat only achievable due to his synesthesia. This allows him to visualise every positive integer up to 10,000 with its own individual characteristics. Synesthesia means that to Daniel, numbers can have colours, shapes, or even feelings associated with them. This way, he's able to experience them in a way not available to most, and may serve to explain how he's able to compartmentalise them to such an impressive extent. As well as this unique mental setup and unusual way he experiences numbers, a medical study revealed that there was greater than normal activity in a portion of his brain, the prefrontal cortex, a major factor in the function of working memory in the human mind. He's penned numerous essays, books and novels over the course of his career, as well as making television appearances, explaining how he performs his feats, and giving an insight into how he thinks and retains information. In addition, he has been the subject of a documentary as well as being subject to medical and psychological studies throughout his entire life. Daniel also co-created and runs a learning-based platform, all while giving talks on his condition and how he believes his mind works. When trying to figure out not only savants and the mechanisms by which their brains process things in such an extraordinary way, it can be hard to understand the intricate and overlapping functions that each individual has in their mind, and what makes some so unique. Daniel himself talks about it in this manner. Moment by moment throughout our lifetime, our brains hum with the work of making meaning, weaving together many thousands of threads of information into all manner of thoughts, feelings, memories and ideas. It seems that in the case of savants, due to the existence of either their underlying conditions or physical construction of their brains, they simply process these things in a different way. So while most savants have either physiological differences in the makeup of their brains or a neurological condition from an early age, there are some that begin to display specific abilities and interests only after an event or incident. Take the case of Patrick Fagerberg, a man who had already lived a fairly interesting life prior to suffering a head injury at a concert at the age of 42. With seven siblings and a roaming lifestyle, he ended up playing professional football in Europe for a time before qualifying as a lawyer and moving to Texas. In 2011, he was knocked unconscious when a camera boom dropped on him at a music festival, but he was discharged from hospital by staff who assured him that there was no lasting damage. It soon, however, became apparent over the next few days that he had suffered a traumatic brain injury and he began having cognitive struggles. Due to the injury, he attended a number of therapies that were intended to help him recover his normal functions. It was during an art therapy session where he felt as though a switch flipped and he developed a fascination with painting, an interest that he'd never pursued before, turned into an obsession with Patrick admitting he spent almost every waking hour painting. Despite no formal training or background, his sudden skill and prodigious output resulted in hundreds of completed works and an exhibition within 18 months. Another example is Tony Sicoria, a medical doctor who was struck by lightning after completing a phone call and attempting to exit the booth. Although he seemed to recover his health fully within a fortnight with no ill effects, he began to develop an obsession with listening to piano music, again a fairly niche interest that he'd never demonstrated before this point. He bought a piano and began to play. Less than half a year later, he was devoting all his time to composing and playing and began to perform. He mastered a number of pieces that considered highly challenging, again with no extensive background or training, due to what he described as a sudden affinity with music, all from that lightning strike. Sicoria wrote a book about his experience which he entitled Notes from an Accidental Pianist and Composer as well as paying tribute to the event that changed his life by composing his very own Lightning Sonata. While the estimates for the number of people that have acquired Savant Syndrome is hard to pin down, it has been suggested by those that study them that the number is somewhere between 40 and 60. Most Savants have something innate in their physical or mental buildup that lends itself to this hyper-organisational mindset which gives them the ability to perform these feats. When the Syndrome is acquired, 
is almost always through some traumatic brain injury. Like in the case of Jason Padgett, who led an otherwise ordinary life up until one night in his early 30s. Leaving a karaoke bar with his friends, he was set upon by two men who struck him over the head, knocking him unconscious, before beginning further assault. Diagnosed with a heavy concussion, he was released from hospital and sent home. Over the course of the next month, Jason developed both OCD and PTSD from the attack, changing his personality entirely overnight. According to his friends and family, he went from an outgoing and sociable man to one who felt compelled to wash his hands repeatedly for extended periods, terrified of germs and hung things over windows to keep the lights out. Struggling heavily with his new and much restricted life after the assault, Jason began to try to manage his disorders and rehabilitate himself via drawing therapy. During the course of this, he realised that his perception of the world had shifted in ways more ambiguous than the compulsions and fears that now ruled his life. He now experienced the world through shapes and abstract visions. Light looked like spirals, water looked like lines, and other intricate geometric constructions that he could not explain but would endlessly doodle. Jason began to carry a drawing pad with him everywhere he went, so he could record these shapes and concepts that he otherwise lacked the understanding to fully express. Although he states that he had some idea that it was something to do with Pi, it wasn't until he had a chance meeting with a high level physicist that he would begin down the path to full understanding. When the physicist saw his drawings and listened to Jason's explanation of what he was seeing, he recognised it as a graphical representation related to Planck's constant. With some encouragement, Jason attended college to study where he then gained the underpinning theories of mathematics. This is when he realised that it all seemed to match with the abstract diagrams that he had felt a compulsion to put to paper. Jason went on to give TED Talks about his story and his hopes that the unique manner in which he can visualise mathematical concepts as geometric shapes can be used to further the fields of engineering, maths and or physics. He now views the attack that changed his life as a gift, rather than just the purely traumatic experience that it must have been. Jason even forgave one of his attackers, who reached out later in life to apologise for what he had done. Each of these truly remarkable people demonstrates that when it comes to the human brain and to the mind, there is still a lot left to be understood about the scope of what we're capable of. There is no denying that memory, learning and social interaction can all be trained, developed and honed to a degree, but is there something in our grey matter's makeup that guides exactly what we will be capable of? Kim Peek being able to accurately recall the contents of more than 12,000 books might be remarkable to the layman, but for him, it was just normal. It was simply the way his mind was programmed. For Daniel Tammet, hearing two numbers and visualising their physical appearance in his mind happened without effort. Being asked to multiply them and seeing them instantly merge to form the colour and shape of the answer to the sum didn't take any specific effort, it just happened. Tony Sicoria can't explain why he fell in love with the piano and composing, because he did it without conscious thought. There are no answers either, in science or medicine. Patrick Fassberg's studying intelligence and dedication led him to being a successful lawyer and inventor, but the injury he suffered seemed to rewire his brain to create breathtaking art almost without any active input. Jason's brutal assault and subsequent trauma resulted in visual representations of mathematical concepts in a form that he didn't have the training or background to understand, but it happened anyway. It was as though his brain just had these concepts hard stamped into them and he went back to school to understand what his mind already knew, like an education entirely in reverse. Arguably, it's Daniel Tammet himself that summarises it the best of all. There is no such thing as an average person. They really are guidelines for people to grapple with the unknown, and we can always surprise expectations. Perhaps one day, we will come to understand and harness this incredibly fascinating phenomenon, hopefully without the often massive drawbacks in day-to-day -day quality of life. Until then, Savant Syndrome remains a deeply interesting topic, a burning question of what we as humans are truly capable of, and a reminder that despite our advancement in knowledge, there are many things we simply do not and may never know, even about ourselves and what we could eventually do.